Imagine you're embarking on a thrilling adventure, and along the way you encounter a mysterious fog that shrouds your path. You can't see what lies ahead, and doubts start creeping in. This is the journey of finding the partner God has chosen for you. It might seem foggy, but there's a divine purpose behind it all. In our quest for love and a blessed marriage, God orchestrates a series of events, including moments of doubt, to shape us for His ultimate plan. Doubt, though unsettling, isn't a roadblock. It's a necessary stepping stone. Just as the Bible tells us that marriage is a beautiful and cherished institution, God takes us on a transformative journey to prepare us for the partner and purpose He has in store. Sometimes, the person God presents or the future He unveils seems too incredible to be true, like a dream beyond reach. We all yearn for a perfect partner in a harmonious home, but yearning alone doesn't guarantee belief. Belief requires trust in God's promise. It's akin to embarking on a hike to the summit of a towering mountain. You might gaze at the peak, but it's the belief in reaching the top that fuels your ascent. Doubt often creeps in due to past experiences or our own perceptions. Maybe you faced heartbreak or disappointment, leaving scars that make it hard to trust God's plan fully. It's natural to wonder if you're deserving of a loving partner or a blissful home. But remember that God's love and plans for you are boundless. Think of your life as a puzzle, and each experience, including doubt, is a crucial piece fitting into God's grand design. Doubt isn't a sign of weakness, but a test of your faith. It's an opportunity for God to strengthen your belief in His promise and His timing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 For we walk by faith, not by sight. This verse reminds us that faith is the guiding light through the fog of doubt. God wants you to trust His vision for your life, even when you can't see the road clearly. Just as Peter walked on water when he focused on Jesus rather than the storm, you too can conquer doubt by fixing your gaze on God's faithfulness. Consider doubt as the clouds that momentarily hide the sun. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's gone. Likewise, when doubt clouds your vision, God's plan remains steadfast. It's during these moments that your trust in Him deepens, making the reward of a loving partner and a blessed home all the more precious. So, my friends, when doubt about your chosen partner surfaces, remember that it's a part of your journey, a journey that God is intricately crafting. Embrace it as a chance to grow, to strengthen your faith, and ultimately step into the beautiful love story God has penned for you. Your doubts are not a sign of God's absence, but a testament to His presence, guiding you toward a love that exceeds your wildest dreams. As you navigate through the mist of doubt, may your faith shine brighter than ever before. Trust in God's plan for your love story, and in due time, the fog will clear, revealing the extraordinary path He has prepared for you. You see, God allows doubt to cross your path not to discourage you, but to draw you closer to Him. It's a way of reminding you that you can't do this on your own, that you need His guidance and strength. Think of it as a gentle nudge from the Almighty encouraging you to rely more on His wisdom and less on your own understanding. Remember the story of the father with the epileptic son in Mark 9. He brought his son to the disciples and to Jesus, desperate for help. Yet even though he wished for his son's recovery, deep down he struggled with unbelief. Sound familiar? We've all been there, yearning for something but lacking the faith to truly receive it. But here's the beautiful part. Jesus didn't scold the Father for his doubts. Instead, he lovingly pointed out that faith can move mountains. In Mark chapter 9, verses 23 through 24, Jesus said, If you can, everything is possible for one who believes. The Father, in his humility, cried out, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And that's where the magic happens. Just like that Father, God allows doubt to surface in your heart so that through faith you can overcome it. He wants you to understand that it's not a matter of whether God can bless your life with an incredible partner. It's a matter of whether you can believe and receive that blessing. You see, the doubt you face isn't meant to be a roadblock, but a stepping stone. It's there to refine your faith, to strengthen your trust in God's plan, and to remind you that you are not the architect of your destiny. He is. Think about it this way. 
Imagine you're trying to assemble a complicated piece of furniture. You may doubt your ability to put it together correctly. So, you turn to the instruction manual. In the same way, God allows doubt to send you back to His Word, to the ultimate instruction manual for life, the Bible. Within its pages, you'll find the guidance and promises you need to navigate your doubts and emerge stronger in your faith. Remember, God is not just interested in granting you a partner. He's interested in nurturing your relationship with Him. When you learn to trust Him in the midst of doubt, you become more reliant on His wisdom, grace, and love. And that's a beautiful place to be. God may be allowing doubt to take root in your heart for a purpose. It's not because He wants to see you struggle or falter, but because He wants you to turn to Him in earnest. It's in these moments of doubt that our faith can truly flourish. So, how do you navigate the sea of uncertainty? Through prayer, the simplest yet most powerful tool at your disposal. Your prayer doesn't have to be filled with elaborate words or perfect grammar. It can be as simple as, Lord, I'm standing at this crossroads and I'm filled with doubt. I don't know if I have what it takes or if this is your plan for me. Please help me strengthen my faith. Admitting your doubt before God is an act of humility and trust. It's an acknowledgement that you can't do it alone, that you need His guidance. And here's the beautiful part. When you admit your doubt before God, you open the door for Him to respond with an answer of faith. What does that mean? It means that God can enable you to believe when, on your own, you might struggle to find a reason to believe. He can infuse you with a faith that transcends doubt. You see, God doesn't cause doubt in your heart. He allows it. The difference is crucial. Doubt is a choice, a reflection of where you are in your relationship with God. But even faith, the antidote to doubt, is a gift from God. He gives it to us in different measures, tailored to our unique journeys. So, when doubt creeps in, recognize it as an opportunity to seek a deeper, more steadfast faith. It's a chance to grow, to embrace the uncertainty, and to trust that God is leading you, even when you can't see the path clearly. This is the answer of faith, the response to doubt that strengthens your spiritual foundation. As you navigate the twists and turns of your dating journey, Remember that God's plan for your life is filled with purpose and intention. Doubt may be a part of that journey, but it's not the destination. It's a stepping stone towards a stronger, more unwavering faith. And in that faith, you'll find the clarity and confidence you need to discern whether someone is truly chosen as your partner. Doubt can be a catalyst for growth. Just like lifting weights to build muscle, God may allow doubt to place you in a position where you can exercise your faith. When you face uncertainties about your partner, it's an opportunity to lean on God, seeking His guidance and wisdom. It's in these moments of doubt that your faith can grow stronger, like a muscle being trained for endurance. God knows you better than you know yourself. He understands the depths of your heart and your walk with Him. Sometimes, He allows doubt to surface not to mock or hurt you, but to reveal your inner world to you. He uses these uncomfortable situations to expose any immaturity, fear, or limitations you might have. It's like shining a light on areas that need growth and refinement. Now, let's not forget the importance of trust and humility in your walk with God. Immature faith often demands that God aligns with our exact desires and expectations. But true faith, the kind God desires, involves surrendering to His will and trusting His plans, even when they differ from our own. As you navigate the doubts about your chosen partner, remember that God has a purpose in allowing this struggle. Seek Him in prayer, study His Word, and meditate on verses that resonate with your journey. One such verse is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5-6. through six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. You see, faith is a precious gift from God, but it's not passive, something we actively work on. Just as a relationship grows through time and effort, so does our faith. When doubt creeps in, it's an opportunity for our faith to flourish. 
It's a chance to declare our need for God's wisdom and guidance. And in return, he blesses us with a partner beyond our wildest dreams. So my dear friend, the next time you find yourself doubting the path that God has chosen for you in matters of love, remember that doubt can be a stepping stone to deeper faith. Trust that God's plan is far more extraordinary than anything you could have imagined. Through doubt, He guides us to a love that's built on faith, and that's a love that's truly worth the wait. Before you let go of or give up on someone in your life, you must ensure that God asks you to do this. God allows some people in our lives for a season, and some for a lifetime. How long a person will be in your life will depend on some factors involving you, them, and the will of God. For instance, it'll depend on how much you care about them and are willing to go forward in life with them. It'll also depend on how willing they are to work with you, to make changes, and to stay true to you. And it'll also depend on whether your union is aligned with the will of God or not. When a relationship serves its purpose, or someone you're involved with isn't fitting into God's plan for your life, it's essential to know it's time to let them go. However, this doesn't apply to everyone. Therefore, as you journey through life, you must become familiar with how the Holy Spirit guides you concerning people and things in your life. Romans 8.14 rightly tells us, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. In other words, God will use His Spirit to lead you concerning someone, and often the Holy Spirit will use undeniable signs. What will these signs look like? Is the Holy Spirit already giving undeniable signs about someone in your life? What if He already is, but you can't discern His voice? Today, let me share three undeniable signs that the Holy Spirit may already be giving you about someone. Consider this as His way of communicating His heart to you. If you listen to His voice, you'll escape the damage and regret from misdirection and failure. Number one, if you find someone who truly loves God and is actively growing spiritually and becoming a better person because of it, the Holy Spirit might be signaling to you that it's a good idea to stay close to them and nurture that connection. One of the greatest things to wish for in a partner is a heart that desires sanctification. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3-6, It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, in that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins, as we told you and warned you before. It's clear that God wants His children to walk in sanctification. This is often a complex process. You see, sanctification itself is a transformative journey. You were saved and your salvation experience was instant when you gave your heart to Jesus. However, sanctification takes time. It often immerses you in different stages in your walk with God, where you embrace the reality of your new life in Christ and break free bit by bit from all the things that pertain to your old self and your former sinful nature. As believers, we need maturity to nurture healthy and God-honoring relationships, and the Bible is there to guide us. The more a person follows the Lord, the more they become transformed into the best version of who they are meant to be in Christ. The progressive journey of sanctification is often fraught with trials and tribulations, especially in its earlier phase. But remember that growth is a process, not an event. Take time to observe whether this person is stuck in a web of sinful habits without any signs of repentance or walking down the path of sanctification. On that path, they'll be struggling with the flesh and the mind. If you see this potential sign in someone, it may be a sign from God to remain hopeful, yet exercise discernment. Stay close to them, support and encourage them. Do not take that, however, as direct confirmation. Instead, trust God to guide you and clarify your future with this person. The good thing about this is that you'll have someone close to you who, regardless of whether you end up together or not, will be a huge source of inspiration regarding your journey of maturity in Christ. 
Number two, if they show humility and repentance, the Holy Spirit may be signaling for you to nurture the relationship. Pride and hardness of heart are very grievous offenses in God's sight. And when someone in your life displays these, it'll be best to let them go. Humility and repentance, on the other hand, are clear signs that you're in the right place. What roles do they play in confirming whether someone should be in your life and if the Holy Spirit is telling you something about them? Sometimes you may have heard something like, after hearing this person say that, I just don't feel like getting close to them anymore. If you've understood the reasoning behind those words, you should learn to listen when the Holy Spirit points out something about someone to you. This will help you get to know more about this person and recognize things in their life they may not want you to see, which will affect you if you stay too close to them. One of the things the Holy Spirit may show you about someone is their attitude towards offenses. Do they humbly take responsibility for offending you, remorsefully apologize, and wholeheartedly repent? Or do they begin to look for ways to turn the tables around to make it look like you were the one at fault? Do they go online and look for a video or article to validate and excuse their actions? Many believers have been successfully deceived into blaming themselves because they're with someone who never admits they hurt anyone or are wrong about anything. Many believers have been stuck with someone who would reluctantly apologize while still blaming someone else. Once you see this, know that it's pride, and this is not a quality of the man or woman God wants you to be with. On the other hand, if you see that this person is quick to sincerely apologize and look to make up for the grief their actions may have caused you while making the effort to keep the peace and love in your relationship, then the Holy Spirit is showing you their good character. Every relationship will always have conflicts. Conflicts aren't the issue. It's how both the offender and the offended deal with them. Let the Holy Spirit take your eyes off emotional attachments and see what He wants you to see about this person. Your decision to stay or leave must be determined by this attitude. This sign's often undeniable, but overlooked by believers, especially when they've become too fond of someone. But the Lord will continue to show you, and He's sending you this message today to open your eyes once more and break you free. And then, number three, if you notice that you're tempted by the idea of freedom from this person, excited about new connections, and willing to move on, but then you feel stuck with a mix of emotions, not knowing how to start. It is an undeniable sign that God has placed a strong connection between you and this person. This is often like something invisible keeps you from moving on, making you think twice, hold on, and endure. This could be God speaking to your heart, urging you not to surrender or let go of this person yet. Have you ever found yourself grappling with the question, why do I still feel so connected to this person? Why is it so difficult to break this bond? This mysterious force, this unexplainable tie that keeps you from moving forward, might just be God's way of sending you a message. Perhaps He hasn't given you the green light to end this relationship for a reason. There could be a deeper reason why God's urging you to remain patient and cling to the love you share, the cherished memories, the companionship, and the mutual affection. You may have attempted to embrace solitude to find peace, only to discover that it remains just out of reach. It's not because you don't deserve happiness, but because God may have a more magnificent plan in store for you. This divine intervention is significant because it symbolizes God's desire for you to persevere and hold on to this person, even when it seems challenging or confusing. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Ecclesiastes 4, 9-10 This verse highlights the value of having supportive and dependable friends. This is often one of the reasons it's challenging to let go of a valuable God-ordained relationship, because they feel irreplaceable. In this enigmatic journey, God's purposes may be beyond your current comprehension. His guidance is a testament to His unwavering commitment to your well-being. It encourages you to trust in His divine plan for your life. So, if you ever wonder why you can't sever that bond, 
consider that God may be orchestrating something truly splendid for you, far beyond your current understanding. Embrace His guidance and hold on to hope, for His plan is full of promise and purpose. It's not a coincidence that you can't find an easy way out. It's a signal from God urging you to remain patient and persist through the challenges because He has a plan for both of you. This is God's way of telling you to hold on and not let go of that person when you notice these signs. You see, life often throws us curveballs and sometimes we wonder if our soulmate will ever come into our lives. The waiting period can be challenging, but let me tell you, there's unexpected beauty in being set apart by God. No matter your age, my friends, if God is in charge, your kingdom spouse will eventually find you. Your age won't define your love story. Remember, Sarah was well beyond her childbearing years when she gave birth to Isaac. God's timing is always perfect. Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14 reminds us to wait for the Lord and take heart. The desires of your heart will be fulfilled in His perfect timing. Be patient and trust the process. Life's journey isn't a race, and comparison is a thief of joy. Your path is uniquely yours, and it's okay if others seem to be moving faster. Trust God's plan for you. Your kingdom spouse will see you when the time is right. Think of this waiting period as preparing for a remarkable adventure. Just as an airplane rises against the wind, you two are rising, becoming the best version of yourself, and when you least expect it, your kingdom spouse will walk into your life. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, on the screen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. It teaches us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Lean not on our own understanding. Surrender your desires, and He will lead you on a straight path, right into the arms of the one who adores and chases after you. So don't let the waiting period steal your joy. Embrace this time to grow, serve, and to love yourself unconditionally. In doing so, you'll become the person your kingdom spouse has been praying for. Remember, your love story is being beautifully crafted by the master designer himself. Embrace the unexpected beauty in being set apart by God. And when the time is right, your kingdom spouse will chase and adore you more than you ever imagined. In the grand story of your life, having a spouse is undoubtedly a blessing, a chapter filled with love, companionship, and shared dreams. But before you enter that chapter, there are prerequisites, there's values, and growth that God desires for you to embrace. It's not about merely waiting for the right person to appear. It's about becoming the right person yourself. God's divine plan is unfolding, and it begins with your personal growth and preparation. Think of yourself as a seed planted in the fertile soil of life, waiting to sprout into something beautiful. Your journey is not about stagnation. It's about becoming the very best version of yourself. Dive into the depths of self-improvement. Explore the passions that fuel your soul and read books that expand your horizons. This season of singleness is your cocoon and you're destined to emerge as a magnificent butterfly. Remember, congratulations are for everyone and your turn is coming sooner than you think. Don't be disheartened by the passing seasons. Instead, embrace the opportunity to bloom in your own time your future spouse, the one who will chase and adore you more than you can imagine, will recognize you when you shine brightly as yourself. It's natural for people to offer their opinions and to question why you are not yet married, as if your worth is determined by your relationship status. But let me remind you of a timeless truth. Your worth is not measured by your marital status, but by your identity in Christ. 
You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and every aspect of your life is orchestrated by the Creator. You see, there's a beauty in walking this path alone, a beauty that comes from being set apart for a unique purpose. Just as God set apart the Israelites in the desert to prepare them for the Promised Land, He is setting you apart now for a purpose beyond your wildest dreams. Your singleness? It's not a curse. It's a divine appointment. Think of it as a season of refining, where you're forged into the person God intends you to be. As you draw closer to Him, He will reveal His plans for your life. God, the creator of the universe, is crafting a love story just for you. He is orchestrating every detail, and in His perfect plan, your heart will find its match. Your kingdom spouse, the one who will chase after you with unwavering devotion, is being prepared by the hands of the Almighty. The way the Lord is so mindful of you, you need to be mindful of yourself. You were the apple of His eyes, and you deserve nothing but the best. You deserve the kind of partner that will put smiles on your face and help you fulfill your purpose, not the type that will take you far from it. All this weight, if you finally decide to settle for someone who is not your kingdom spouse, then all your weight is in vain. Just as God cherishes you, He cherishes the idea of your joy-filled union with the one He has chosen for you. Your heart is a treasure, and your kingdom spouse is destined to cherish it. Don't allow the echoes of doubt and negativity to mar the masterpiece that God is creating in your life. Don't let people's words push you. Your kingdom spouse is eventually going to see you. Just keep living your life and trust that God will never disappoint you. He's never been one to back on his words. If he sees your kingdom spouse, they will eventually see you, and I know they will. Imagine your life as a journey, a journey where you are steadily moving forward. You may have stumbled along the way, made mistakes, or experienced heartache, but every step has led you closer to the person God has ordained for you. Your past does not define your future. It only serves as a reminder of God's amazing grace. Life is a journey and a process, so keep on moving. And when you get to your stop for marriage, your kingdom spouse will see you. Most of us are scared because of the kind of life we have lived in the past and because of what we think we do not deserve, a kingdom spouse. Beloved, the Bible made us understand that whenever we repent our sins, our sins are being forgotten. But because the devil, who is the accuser of the brethren, cannot let you live a fulfilling life, he is going to continue making you remember your past. In God's eyes, you are a new creation, free from the chains of your past. Embrace His love, trust His timing, and keep your heart open to the beautiful love story He's writing just for you. Your kingdom spouse will chase and adore you more than you can imagine because God's love knows no bounds and His plans are perfect. You see, your kingdom spouse, the one destined for you by the Almighty Himself, they won't judge you for your past mistakes. They won't dwell on the scars or the blemishes because they carry within them the very attributes of Christ. In His eyes, you are forgiven, redeemed, and loved beyond measure. So embrace that forgiveness, dear friend, for your past does not define your future. The enemy may try to plant doubt and fear in your heart, but remember, he's just a noisemaker, a voice that should hold no power over your destiny. Your kingdom spouse is out there waiting for the perfect moment to enter your life. Keep living that newfound life in Jesus, walking in his grace and mercy, and your beloved will recognize you when the time is right. Some may have whispered that you're destined to be alone, but their words hold no weight in the grand design of God's plan for your life. Those previous relationships that slipped through your fingers were not meant to be because they were not part of God's perfect plan. But now, it's different. Your ordained partner is on the horizon. 
and no force on earth can snatch them away from you. While you eagerly await their arrival, focus your heart and mind on things of eternal significance. Dive deeper into your relationship with God. Seek His wisdom and guidance. As you draw closer to Him, your soul will be enriched and your faith will flourish. It's in this process of spiritual growth that the kingdom spouse will notice you. They'll be drawn to your light, your unwavering trust in God's timing, and your commitment to self-improvement. Remember, God's timing is always perfect. He's preparing both you and your future partner for a love story that will surpass your wildest dreams. Trust in His promise that the person for you will chase after your heart and adore you in ways beyond your imagination. As we journey through life, let us lean on the scriptures for strength and encouragement. In Isaiah 43, 19, it's written, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Indeed, God is doing a new thing in your life, bringing you a love that exceeds your expectations. God knows the desires of your heart, but He also knows when the time is right. Just as Sarah's faith was tested, so will yours be. But remember, it's during these times of waiting and trusting that your character is refined. Think of yourself as a precious diamond in the making. Diamonds are created under immense pressure, and the longer it takes, the more brilliant they become. Your waiting period is polishing you into the person you need to be for your future partner. And it's allowing them to be shaped too. Sometimes God uses our moments of uncertainty to guide us towards greater clarity. In the realm of relationships, this couldn't be more relevant. If everything was crystal clear from the very start, if you never had to wrestle with doubts or uncertainties, would you truly seek God for His guidance? Would you earnestly seek His will and purpose for your life? Often, it's the lack of certainty that compels us to turn to God, to seek His wisdom and discernment. Finding the One isn't just about the lovely romantic moments. It's about aligning your life with someone whose goals and values resonate harmoniously with yours. Imagine your life as a journey towards a shared destination you don't want to travel with someone who's heading in a completely different direction. That's where the importance of shared goals and values come into play. It's not about agreeing on every little thing. Differences can be beautiful, but it is about having a fundamental understanding of where you want to go in life. Living with someone whose goals, opinions, and values vastly differ from yours can be incredibly challenging. It's like trying to walk in an opposite direction on a narrow path you'll certainly clash and struggle to find common ground. And if you're in a relationship where you're witnessing such stark differences, it's a clear signal that this person may not be the one meant for you. When you meet the one, doubt may pay you a visit. Let's dive into something we've all felt at one point or another in our quest for love. Doubt. It's like that unexpected guest who shows up uninvited to the party. You're about to discover why encountering doubt when you meet the one might not be such a bad thing after all. Picture this, you're on a journey seeking a special someone to share your life with. You've met someone who seems to tick all the boxes. They're kind, funny, and share your values. But then, just when you thought you were sure, doubt creeps in. You find yourself questioning if this person is truly the one. Having doubts about someone is perfectly normal. In fact, it's healthy. If you were to meet someone and instantly believe they're the one without any ounce of doubt, it might be cause for concern. Blindly following your feelings can lead to unwise decisions. Doubt in dating is somewhat akin to questioning your own salvation. People often wonder, am I truly saved? How can I be sure I'm a genuine Christian? Yes, confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord is crucial, Romans 10.9. But Jesus also said, You will recognize them by their fruits, Matthew 7.16. In other words, a true Christian's life should bear fruit, and self-examination is a part of this process. 
The same principles apply to dating. The doubt you feel is like a self-examination of your emotions and intentions. It's a sign that you're not blindly following your own feelings, but instead seeking God's guidance. In 2 Corinthians 13.5, the Bible urges us to examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. This willingness to examine your authenticity as a Christian is a positive sign that you are genuinely seeking the truth. Similarly, when you doubt if someone is the one, it shows that you're not rushing into things. This doubt is a stepping stone, a part of the process God uses to confirm whether this person is indeed the one He intends for you to marry. So don't be alarmed by doubt. Embrace it as a part of your journey. When you can imagine not being with this person, it allows you to trust God's plan more when He affirms that this individual is the one. Now, let's dig deeper into recognizing the one. It's not just about feelings. It's about compatibility. When you find someone who shares your goals and values, planning your lives together becomes a joyous adventure. It's about being with someone who envisions a future with you, not just someone looking for what they can get from you. Furthermore, authenticity is a telltale sign. The one is a person with whom you can be your true self. You don't need to put on a facade or pretend to be someone you're not. Those quirky, unique parts of you are on full display and you feel comfortable in your own skin. No need to impress or struggle to fit a mold. You are with the one. Remember, meeting the one isn't just about hearts and flowers. It's about a deeper connection, shared values, and the comfort of being your genuine self. Embrace doubt as a guide on your journey and trust that God's plan will lead you to the one meant for you. When you meet the one, you'll experience growth, grace, and gratitude. Meeting the one is a moment of divine orchestration, but it's essential to recognize that this journey is not all sunshine and roses. When two imperfect souls come together, there's bound to be sin, mistakes, and missteps. It's a natural part of being human. However, the beauty of a Christ-centered relationship lies in how you navigate these unpleasant moments. In the course of your journey together, both of you will undoubtedly fall short at times. You'll hurt each other, intentionally or unintentionally, and face situations where disagreements seem inevitable. But remember, these are opportunities for growth, not reasons for despair. The Bible reminds us in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No one's exempt, not even the two people who've been brought together by a higher purpose. Embrace the fact that you both are a work in progress. As you embark on this journey, you'll discover a transformative power of grace. Just as God extends His unmerited favor to us, you must also offer each other forgiveness and grace. When conflicts arise, follow the biblical path of reconciliation outlined in Matthew 18, 15-17. Lovingly confront the issue, seek understanding, and be open to change. Remember that forgiveness isn't just a one-time event. It's a continual choice you make to release the past and move forward together. It's not just about reconciling with each other, but also with God. Remember that sin affects not only your relationship, but also your connection with your Heavenly Father. Seek His forgiveness and let His grace wash over both of you. It's through these moments of repentance and reconciliation that your love will deepen and your bond will grow stronger. When you meet the one, it's like finding the missing piece of your heart, someone who loves you just as deeply as you love them. Imagine being in a relationship where you don't have to constantly question if your partner truly loves you because their actions speak louder than words. That's the beauty of being with the one. Their love for you shines brightly, bringing joy and peace to your heart. In a successful relationship, both parties must love each other equally to ensure happiness and harmony in the home. However, the journey to finding the one can be fraught with challenges. Many people rush into relationships and marriage simply because they desire companionship. This haste often leads them to overlook the importance of ensuring that their partner reciprocates their love. 
This oversight can result in bitterness and disappointment within marriages. One aspect of life where haste should be avoided at all costs is marriage. We must patiently seek guidance from the Lord in prayer to reveal the one meant for us. The consequences of missing this divine guidance can impact every other aspect of our lives. The biblical story of Samson serves as a poignant example of the significance of choosing the right partner. Samson's ill-fated love for Delilah, who had ulterior motives, ultimately led to his downfall. He was destined for a greater purpose, but his poor choice in a life partner had devastating consequences. It serves as a stark reminder that to discover the one, you must first ensure that they love you deeply and are committed to a lifelong journey with you. In our quest for the one, we must also remember that true love isn't just about romance and affection. It's about a shared commitment to building a life together, weathering storms, and experiencing the highs and lows as a team. It's about growing together, supporting one another's dreams, and nurturing a love that stands the test of time. When you meet the one, you'll face a few critics. Let's get real here. Finding the one doesn't always come with a unanimous round of applause from your friends and family. Sure, some lucky couples might experience a standing ovation, but for most of us mere mortals, it's a bit more complicated. Now, I'm not saying you should brush off every bit of advice or concern that comes your way. After all, the people who care about you genuinely want what's best for you. Proverbs 27.6 It's essential to take their thoughts and feelings into consideration, especially when it comes to matters of the heart. But here's the kicker. Not everyone in your Christian community is a relationship guru. Some may be less experienced or dealing with their own relationship baggage. Their disapproval might be more about their struggles than your budding romance. So, what's the takeaway? Don't be too quick to dismiss those who voice their concerns. But also, don't let every naysayer rain on your love parade. When you meet the one, you're bound to stir up a bit of controversy. And that's perfectly okay. Think of it like this. Even in the Bible, not all stories had smooth sailing. Take Noah, for instance. Imagine the neighbors raising their eyebrows as he built that ark. Or consider Ruth and Boaz. They didn't exactly follow the conventional path to love either. The point is, sometimes God's plan doesn't align with everyone's expectations. So when you encounter these skeptics, remember that your love story is uniquely yours, just like the plan God has for you. Embrace it, learn from it, and grow together. After all, the journey to the one isn't always a straight line. Sometimes it's a beautifully messy zigzag. In the end, what matters most is your faith, your connection, and your happiness. So let the critics whisper. Let them doubt. Because when you meet the one, their disapproval might just be a sign that you're on to something truly special. I'm sure that you'd love to know how to make yourself attractive as a Christian woman trusting God for your future husband. This is a very important subject because as a Christian woman, you need to understand two things. Number one, the rules of engagement for Christian romance are far different from the rules of engagement in worldly romance. Number two, you have a responsibility in drawing your future husband to you. Many Christian women called into marriage often miss this, thereby delaying or completely cutting themselves off from the great marital journey prepared for them by God. Prayer is good. It's good to pray. You must keep praying. However, in addition to that, you have to be proactive as you work side by side with the person God wants to bring you. It is correct that the man has to make the first move, do most of the work, and pursue the woman. This is the natural order of things, regardless of whether you're a Christian or an unbeliever. However, in this video, I'll share four things you need to do to attract the man God has ordained to be your future husband. Number one, when you meet the one chosen by God to be your future husband, try to evoke the right and godly desires in him. Let me explain this. 
I know that your greatest desire as a Christian woman is to marry a godly man who loves and fears God with all his heart. You want a man who has consecrated himself to God and is on a journey of sanctification, trusting God to help him develop and live by godly desires. If this is truly your desire for a husband and the father of your children, then you must also prepare yourself to be proactive in that relationship. How? By being the godly type of woman he's praying for. This type of woman is not trying to seduce him or make him sin against God, but rather she'll help him to grow in his faith, feel loved and appreciated, and make the right decisions. If you come into any godly man's life doing the opposite of this, one of these two things is guaranteed to happen. One, you'll turn him into the opposite of what you've prayed for, because instead of helping him be a man of God, you would have aroused the old nature of sin he was fighting to overcome as a Christian man. Or two, and he'll leave instead of coming closer to you. One of these two things is bound to happen if you don't evoke a positive feeling in him towards you that appeals to his deepest spiritual needs. One of the most attractive things a Christian man looks for in a woman is her ability to support his pursuit of God. It makes you irresistible. He wants someone who challenges him to seek God, shun sin, and follow God's purpose for his life. He will make it a life commitment to pursue you and have you by his side. Number 2. God will draw your future husband to you when you show him you like him. Society has taught women to hide their feelings for the men they like and let the man pursue her and find out himself. So a Christian woman who has yet to have her mind transformed could like a man but find herself giving him the cold shoulder avoiding him and sometimes even being rude to him. The truth is that a man must be the one to pursue the woman. However, the woman has to show him that he can and he should. I love to reference the story of Ruth and Boaz. Yes, Boaz was being kind and generous and was ready to be a husband, but Ruth hadn't done anything to show she was open to a relationship at first. It took the wise counsel of her mother-in-law and mentor, Naomi, before she participated in the process. With one action, Boaz got the message and made a commitment. So when you see a Christian man you feel drawn towards and whom you believe is drawn to you, give him signs that you feel the same way about him. Let him know that it's okay to call you, to say hi, and to ask you out. Make yourself available welcoming the idea of a possible relationship with him. The right person will know how to take the appropriate action that shows he respects and genuinely desires a relationship with you. Number 3. God intends for you to attract your future husband by allowing him to feel like he brings you happiness and by letting him feel like a capable and cherished man in your life. It's crucial to understand the profound role of allowing a man to feel like a provider and a protector in your life. Every man wants to feel like that. In fact, it's this feeling that makes him feel he's ready to go for a relationship in the first place. This dynamic aligns beautifully with God's design for harmonious relationships between a man and a woman. Firstly, embracing vulnerability is a powerful key. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, regardless of who they are. God has made you a woman, and He has made you a beautiful one at that. Allow yourself to be open and receptive to His care and affection. Women often want to be strong and independent, which is commendable, but it's equally important to let Him see your softer side and feel that He is seen and appreciated. Share your joys with Him, your hopes, and even your vulnerabilities. By doing so, you invite him into your inner world where he can provide emotional support and care. Think about it. No one wants to be where they don't feel valued. A man must feel like and be shown that he's been accepted as wise, strong, and responsible. This is the bedrock of a solid and loyal relationship that will last, and it leads to a second point. Secondly, Recognize and appreciate his efforts, whether it's a small gesture like finding something he's interested in 
and helping him pursue it more. Secondly, recognize and appreciate his efforts. Whether it's a small gesture like finding something he's interested in and helping him pursue it more, planning his goals with him and offering helpful input, suggesting more profitable things he can do with his resources to help him grow, or acknowledging his actions with gratitude. This not only makes him feel valued but also reinforces his sense of purpose in your life. Moreover, encourage his leadership. In any relationship, there's a natural ebb and flow of decision-making. Allow him to take the lead as God has ordained for him. It doesn't mean that you're irrelevant. It simply means that you're choosing to humble yourself, submit, and obey to God's model for godly marital relationships. This isn't about relinquishing your voice, but rather fostering an environment where both partners contribute their strengths. Lastly, communication is paramount. Share your feelings, desires, and expectations openly and honestly. Let him know how his love and support make you happy. This affirmation strengthens the bond between you and lets him commit himself to doing even more to make you happier. Therefore, to attract your future husband that God has ordained for you, you must let him feel like a strong and valued man by allowing him to make you happy. Although the modern world may tell you differently, embracing feminine vulnerability and letting the right man contribute to your joy will help you nurture both a relationship and also align yourself with God's design for love and partnership for the two of you. Lastly, number four, spend time in places where he can find you. Back to the story of Ruth. Did you know that this was one of the things Naomi asked her to do? No one who wants to be seen hides themselves, and no godly woman who wants to be found by men of the light spends time hiding in the dark. Take wisdom from this, dear daughter of God. As much as it's okay to embrace yourself as a respectable and reserved person who loves her space, always staying at home and locking yourself indoors may not give the right and godly man the opportunity to find you. You need to go out, make yourself visible, Naomi told Ruth to not only attend Boaz's feast, but to make sure she knew where Boaz would lie down after the party. Then she must go and lie down at his feet. This is placing herself strategically where Boaz would not only see her, but also know that she was the woman for him. If you want a Christian and godly man, you must go where Christian and godly men go. You may not find that man at a nightclub, an ungodly dating app, or some wild party. Matthew chapter 24, verse 28 says, Wherever there's a carcass, there the vultures will gather. In your journey to find a godly man, remember that divine connections often happen when you position yourself in places where like-minded Christian individuals gather. Trust in God's timing and His plan, and be open to His guidance. Your faith, presence and obedience will lead you to the man meant for you and will attract him to you.